What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of my new career mode. This is episode number 48 and we start today's episode off with a look at the league table. As you can see with the games ago we've already been crowned champions of the Serie A. We are 9 points clear of Juventus and of course we'd already won the uh, the league title with a couple of games to spare before that last one against Fiorentina which we won by 2 goals to nil. So coming into the final game of the season this was a formality. We already knew that we won the title but we just wanted a good performance in front of our fans for the final time of the season. Taking on Hellas Verona sitting in 10th place. You can see what a team I picked as well. It was the usual first 11. I was contemplating resting a lot of the players and playing a backup side, but I just thought at the end of the day, I did that against Fiorentina a penultimate game. I may as well play the starters for the final game. See if I can get their stats up a little bit, make them uh, look even better on the end of season stats, uh, sort of uh, run through, if you will. And uh, there you go. And the first chance would fall to us as well in the eighth minute as we had a good chance here to open the scoring. Poloski finds a Mobley and we would indeed open the scoring. A Mobley making it 1 0 2 2. Torino getting the goal there to open the scoring and giving us the lead early on in this game. And the Mobley this season, he's not going to match the 27 goals Poloski scored. The man celebrating with him here. But even so, he's had a great debut season for us and no one can deny that. He's been really, really good in front of goal. That was now his 23rd goal in the Serie A this season. I think it was 23rd goal. But even so, Mobley with the goal there and 22nd goal in the Serie A this season. 22nd goal and sure, he won't match Poloski's. But even so, he's had a great debut year for us. And he would actually um, get his 23rd goal here as well because as Hellas Verona get the ball away, uh, they, they get the ball away here. Gabby Dini crosses the ball and picks out a Mobley and he heads the ball into the back of the net to make it Torino 2, Hellas Verona 0. So another goal for Mobley. No need to celebrate too dramatically. We knew we were going to win the title and probably the final day as well. So Mobley does make it 2-0 to Torino. 23rd goal in a Serie A this season. And it was how the game would finish as well. There are a few more chances. There are quite a few more chances really to report, but I just decided to just show you the goals. As it was the final game of the season, not really too important. And we have indeed won the Serie A title. We knew that already and we get to lift the trophy as well. So that's that's basically the reason I played this game. I was thinking maybe I should simulate it. But then I thought, no way, man. I want to lift the title with uh, Torino. So really pleased with that. But uh, also as well, how many titles do you think we're going to win with Torino? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, I think we'll probably play like three, four, possibly even five more seasons after this one. So how many titles do you think we'll win with Torino? Let me know in the comments. I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with an extra two. I'll say we'll end up with three titles with Torino come the end of the season. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments how many more titles you think will win with Torino. Still, Maximovic does indeed lift the Serie A trophy, so delighted with that. Our skipper does get to lay his hands on some silverware for the first time in his career. Of course, last season we reached the TIM Cup quarter final, and we weren't in Europe, and we were runners-up in the league. This season we reached the TIM semi-finals, we reached the Champions League semi-finals, but we did win the league title, so delighted with that. And as you can see in that game, Mobile was my player in the match, and we we did get £10 million as well for winning the Serie A. So absolutely delighted about that. And I said in the last episode, we needed to do that. We needed to win the title this season after coming so close last season. And I'm glad we did. Uh, still, goalkeeper of the tournament was Bernie. Uh, he was also the only player that got into the team of the competition, uh, despite Immobile winning the golden boot. And also, player of the competition went to this guy. How about that? For uh, Hez Verona. Not really sure why exactly. But uh, even so, as you can see, a look at the league table here. 38 games have gone. We have finished the Serie A season and we did indeed win the title by nine points so delighted with that and you know we, we ran Juventus so close last season but Juventus this year had a patch around February March time where they were just all over the place really and that really cost them this season they fell behind the pace a little bit behind us and Genoa and they never really caught up to be honest but uh, still here's a look at the uh, top goal scorers top assist makers clean sheets so on and so forth uh, last season Gabbiadini was the top assist maker for us in the league but sadly not this year however uh, Burnley did keep the uh, clean sheet sheet uh, record if you will uh, most clean sheets in the season so he did what Padelli did last season too and also Mobley was our top goal scorer and the league's top goal scorer 23 as well and uh, following that as well I decided to pick my Italy team for the upcoming European Championships uh, that starts in the next episode and I will say as well um, every uh, every European Championship episode will have will have the title of like Euro 2016 group stage or knockout stage or whatever round we're in. So if you're not a fan of international football in career mode, then basically just give them ep the episode or the episodes a miss and uh, don't worry about watching them. So there you go. We'll start in the next episode anyway. That's the Italy side I picked. It was actually quite a difficult side because the Italy team like it's got some really good players. Now don't get me wrong, but there's quite a few players that are really similar in terms of the uh, the stats they have in the 
same positions and I didn't really know who to choose over who, you know, but uh, even so I picked my team and we'll have to wait and see uh, how we get on in the European Championships, which again, start in the next episode. And if you're not a fan of international football, then just skip over the episodes and uh, you'll see when we come back to the new season because you'll see what the title of the video is. But uh, still, we have a squad report to end the episode off. Uh, sorry, not to end the episode off. <laughs> We're only five minutes in to, uh, to end the season off. And also look at the stats as well. You can see how the players have currently done this season and uh, how well we've uh, how well we've seen progression from the players as well in terms of their attributes too. As you guys know, like I've, I've tried to avoid talking about it and complaining about it as much as possible really, but it is so frustrating how so many players in this team just haven't grown when they really should do. You know, you think of Fabian Cher, Belanta as well. Um, you know, there's quite a few players in the team really just have not grown whatsoever. And even the players that have grown have only gone up by like one rating, for example. It's been really, really frustrating. But even so, you know, we, we've seen some development for some players. And I guess that's better than nothing. And also look at the players that will be representing the club in the European Championships as well. And uh, as well, to end the season off, we decided to hire a global transfer network scout. I uh, bought the best one available. Uh, that Greek guy there looks pretty decent. Hopefully that'll help with some uh, scouting. And also I bought a new youth scout as well. As I mentioned before, with the budget, I don't feel like any of it gets carried over. So you may as well spend your money on scouts and pre-contracts while you can, I suppose. I signed this youth scout and we'll wait and see how he does for us. Uh, our current one right now has picked us up some great players from our academy. So hopefully this guy comes in and does the same. As you can see with the transfer budget, this is how much money we've got if we put it all in the transfers, all the wages. I left it at 50-50, as I always do when I end the season. And uh, there you go. And also a look as well at the contracts too. Bernie and Damian only have one year and one month left on their contract. But this is really, really interesting. Now pay attention to this. I offered Bernie a new contract, as I said I was going to do. Gave him the 80 grand a week. Gave him a free year extension. 5% clean cheap bonus and a crucial first team player role as well hopefully he would accept that uh, sort of longer deal than the one he wanted and we'll wait and see what he says but um, actually it doesn't happen now it happens in a couple of minutes time but even so uh, we give Bernie a new contract and also as well we had a youth scout report uh, see how the uh, final batch of players look from the, uh, the the scouts report we signed one of these players it was Nunzio Sava to our academy and we'll wait and see how he looks in the future and also as well we do end the season here with Bernie accepting his contract so delighted with that but with Darmian, it's a really, really interesting contract negotiations. And this is something you really need to watch out for. I offered Darmian a new two-year deal on, I think it was 50 grand a week, which he wanted. And I didn't want to give him the important first-team player role because he's not an important first-team player. So I didn't give him a squad status. And with Kamisa, uh, I did the same here as well. Gave him a seven grand a week contract, which he wanted for an extra three years. And gave him the, uh, I think I actually gave him the squad rotation stats, which he wanted, which was fine. But with uh, Darmian, I didn't give him what he wanted. So pay attention to that. And you'll wait and see what happens in just a moment's time. Still, we won manager, manager of the season, which was great. And I thought I'd show you this as well. Just a bit of trivial stuff. Coelho did indeed win top goal scorer in the Champions League in his final season, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, Manchester United went on to win the Champions League as well. And as for the TIM Cup, Juventus were the winners of that. So there you go. And we ended the season here as well in May. Now, this was interesting because I actually thought we ended the season in June last season. But for some reason, we, end, we ended the season in May this year. As you can see, the board apparently said we didn't do as well as we wanted in the Champions League and I was like what we reached the semi-finals that's better than what we asked for you know they wanted us to reach the, uh, the round of 16 stage uh, well first of all it was reached the group stage which we did I upped it to reach the uh, knockout stage which we did we got to the semi-finals and apparently they weren't happy with that I was like how does that make sense that's, that's just a ridiculous bug but uh, I did win manager of the year which was great and we see our players returning from loan as well as we officially end the season here so we go into June going into the new season which was kind of surprising because again I always thought it was the end of June when it ends and we go into July to start the new season when the transfer window opens because the transfer window wasn't open at this stage. As you can see, though, we had a use month for report. It was now into June, which is totally fine. Uh, so I guess just this season, for some reason, we started a month early. Don't know why exactly. We can see how the players are currently getting on. I will probably end up promoting Lorenzo Motta soon. Just not right now, even though he does look absolutely fantastic already. As you can take a look at the other academy players as well. Uh, two players arrived on pre-contract, which is kind of surprising because we're not in a we're not in a transfer window yet. Grenier and Alexandro came in, and Darmian declined his contract as you can see here as well the league objective is to um to win the league title like we did last season and the season's budget is 22 million pounds which I'm totally fine I think that's a totally fair budget 23 million pounds even which I think is a totally fair budget but Darmian declined his contract and you'll see in just a moment's time after you see Alexandro and Clement Grenier's stats who have joined the club despite us not being in the transfer window how on earth that makes sense I don't know but uh, Alexandro and Clement Grenier come in and as you can see as well the the contracts Darmian despite declining his deal has been given a new contract on you've got four years left even though 
his contract demands weren't met and he's still on 30 grand a week. So Darmian's got a new deal. He's not taken a pay increase, even though he rejected it. So I don't know how exactly that makes sense. And the same happened with Kamisi. He declined his contract, yet he's still got five years left and he's still on 500 quid a week. So I don't know how on earth that happened there, but somehow I managed to get them new, improved deals and not give them any more wages. They got a longer deal, but they're, they're getting paid the exact same amount, which is really, really weird. But I gave Maximovic a new contract as well, hoping the same would happen here. But sadly, he did actually take a pay increase uh, after he declined his first one. We negotiated again. He does accept it the second time of asking. Uh, the third time of asking, I should say, as you'll see, he declines this one as well. But that does end the episode, guys. So as always, a big thank you for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, if you have enjoyed today's episode of my new career mode, then please do leave a like. So it's much appreciated. It really does help my channel out. A reminder, the uh, next episode, we're going to start the Euro 2016 off. So if you're not a fan of international football and career mode, then just give that one a miss. But even so, hopefully you enjoyed the episode regardless. Uh, please do leave a like if you didn't enjoy today's episode of my new career mode. And I'll see you for the next episode of my new career mode, episode number 49, where we'll start the Euros off of Italy very soon.